What's an unabashed brag about yourself? I took a case to the United States Supreme Court as lawyer. Did you win? Did you create a precedent? Even if you lose that's a precedent. That sounds like a clever Hamilton verse in the making. The court is set in place by the president even if you lose. That's a precedent. Treasury Secretary. Washington's the president every American experiment sets a precedent what a I miss. First song of act 2. I pick up trash on the side of the road cause I hate litter. First time doing it filled 7, 55 gallon bags. Thank you for that. I've started doing that this spring and it's genuinely so satisfying. Get some good tunes going and just have at it. Before you know it, you've got bags full of trash and can look back at a spotless stretch of road. Feels good. I hold the world record for two sued spider solitaire fastest time at 150. How much luck was involved at that? Could you break it one day or was it a once in a lifetime occurrence? Grew up lower income in a single parent household. Made me a bit paranoid about being broke. Worked the past 9 years and saved about $450,000 by keeping my standard of living basically the same since college. Small med apartments in not the best neighborhood. Cooking food etc. Close bracket. Obviously not something I can share IRL. But I hope this gives me a better adulthood than childhood. Edit. Obligatory wow this blew up. A few people asked about salary and this is my history. I got many lucky breaks. Like getting a job in the first place. Later. My boss quit. And I got his job. Interim slash no pay bump at first. But later got an increase. HCOL cities. Also living the dink life with a partner. The dark side is spending a lot of time on work. Missing out on trips with friends. Using work as a mental health crutch. Etc. Edit 2. A lot of people asked what I do. It's basically programming plus being a creative slash ideas person in an area that doesn't have a lot of programmers. So I'm not a great programmer, but I'm better than a lot of people I'm around. And the blend of creative slash ideas plus programming turns out to be a blend that's hard to find. Most people in my industry are just creatives with no practical skills. It's just weird how it worked out. So all that plus moving into management which I mostly hate, and I'm not really sweeted for, introvert, self-confidence issues, imposter syndrome I push through, but it does offer a pay increase versus doing similar work with less responsibility, short fast claps, perfect reaction. I got shot through the chest at age 16 by housebreakers, but I walked, staggered, the next day, and I was able to do some gentle waltzing 12 days after. I managed to remain cheerful and keep my chin up and my upper lip stiff. What? Holy hell dude. And that's really only the start of the story. Both my parents were shot and beaten the same night but miraculously survived and my brother was tied and beaten while the intruders demanded to know where the money was. While the rest of us were lying in pools of our own blood and vomit. Groaning. Sorry for the gory details. There's honestly plenty more if anyone's morbidly curious. Backslash view 200d. I'm morbidly curious. You were first. So everybody will just have to read the details here. I was shot in the front of the chest. A little off to the right side. I immediately collapsed backwards. Even though I had been running forwards full tilt, I didn't know what the problem was yet. I heard calls for help. But wasn't sure it was intruders. Scarcely any blood issued from my entry wound due to gravity. But I also had an exit wound not far from my spine through which I lost a few liters worth. As you can imagine, my nightwear was thoroughly soaked and freezing. It was the 6th of July, which is about as cold as it gets in the southern hemisphere. The bullet obviously pierced my right lung. When I expanded my ribcage in an effort to breathe, air sucked in through the hole instead of through the old regular airways and back out again, making a dreadful gurgling smooching bubbling sound. The pain completely recalibrated my pain scale. Our only son was in a wheelchair and passed away when he was in his 20s. To try and get over our grief we moved to Thailand. We thought everything being different might help us get over our loss. We went trekking in the jungles of northern Thailand and stayed with a family in a very remote village. When we arrived the family's baby boy, Baru, crawled up to me and climbed into my lap. 
We had such a good visit we went back a couple of months later. The little boy should have been walking, but his ankles would fold over, and he couldn't support his weight. We checked with the family, and with the village elders asking if we could take him to the hospital in the city to get checked. The whole family came to the city, the first time they'd done that, and the doctors confirmed Baru would never walk without intervention. We paid all the bills for his 12-week hospitalization. Three months of follow-up and leg braces slash therapy. I'm so happy to say that Baru now walks, runs and climbs trees in the village with all of the other kids. He doesn't need the braces anymore. It's like he never had a problem. I was never able to give my son the gift of walking, so it made me really happy that I could do that for Baru. That is absolutely beautiful that you did that. Condolences on the loss of your beloved son. Thank you very much for your kind words. When we saw that Baru couldn't stand my wife, and I didn't even need to discuss it, we both knew what we needed to do and did it. I had a stroke when I was 14. Have had almost a dozen mini strokes, shires, in the years since, I'm 28 now. Have an undiagnosed condition causing joint pain in my hands and knees, and recently developed an autoimmune disorder. I powered through physical rehab, occupational therapy, and school. Did my best. Got the degree I wanted. And in January, landed a dream of a job, decent pay, flexible hours, great people, and a permanent contract with annual pay rises. Considering there was a time I thought I'd end up at home on disability benefits for life I'm immensely proud of what I've managed to do. Respect. I saved a little girl's life out camping with my wife. She fell into the campfire when her parents weren't looking. And I performed immediate intervention of her burns with my first aid kit plus gallons of cool water. She had to be airlifted out to a burn unit when she arrived at the fire station 20 minute drive away. Badass. Everybody wants to be the guy that can handle this when everyone else panics. Not freezing up in a crisis is pretty easy. But getting through the day to day grind is like Herculean levels of effort for me. Slash and I even like my job. Not to get too personal RN or be a armchair psychiatrist. But if you've had a troubled upbringing or traumatic event happen to you, your survival instinct will develop to be sharp as hell and will keep you going at the cost of being tired all the time. I'm the same way and in the process of getting through it myself, slash, I imagine that's true. No childhood is perfect. But I think in my case, general mild anxiety is just a tray. It runs in the family. On the plus side, Though I've missed a lot of sleep worrying about missing flights. But I've never missed one. Because I always leave far enough ahead of time I make it. Even if something goes wrong. And I'm generally over prepared for any meeting type stuff. So the day before the meeting is hell. But the meeting itself is no big deal at all. My job is secure and pays me more than I probably would make elsewhere with my experience level. Got in on the ground. Floor of the firm I work at. And am now invaluable. Boss has admitted the firm wouldn't be as successful if I hadn't gone with him when he split from his last partnership. I make good money. I can put away some every month. I can occasionally splurge without losing my hair. And, most importantly, my job hours are pretty much set, so I don't have to put in more than 40 to 45 most weeks. Life is good for me. Heck yeah man. I hope I can feel that kind of success when I'm on my own. I'm a competitive laser tag player. I made it to the 34th best individual player in the country and last played for the 19th place team for nationals. I plan to play for a higher rank team at the next nationals. Whether that's next year or the year after, damn pandemic might cancel the comp. Edit. Competitive does not mean pro. To be pro we have to get paid. There is currently no pro scene for laser tag. We play for bragging rights. How does one get into that? I played casually for a bit then someone who was a part of the local league told me I should come to the comp nights. That's pretty much how we recruit all competitive players ATM. From that point on I've played several times a week almost every week. When you play that much laser tag it doesn't take long for a national level team to make an offer. If you're looking to try it then look for a place that has indoor laser tag and ask if they are a competitive site running PNC packs. If they run laser force or any other system they probably aren't a competitive site. Or in the case of laser force. Their camps are very small. Most PNC sites have zone in the name. 
or have zone laser plastered on the website banner in the building. TLDR. Look for a PNC laser tag site and play there a lot. They can be identified by the words and being a big factor in their advertisement. I sold the patent to a side project I was working to a multinational for a pretty nice chunk of equity. I was able to buy a rental property, land for a retirement home, and a sick as condo to live in for now. This year has been the craziest time of my life with the lowest lows and the highest highs. Also got accepted to grad school and start in a month so looking forward to being busy. What was it? I can't get into specifics without darksing myself. But a method for recycling platinum group metals commonly used in catalytic converters and decorative electroplating. IDK. Bro. Sounds pretty specific. This comment sounds like Seth Rogen, and I fully agree with it.